Yes, welcome back. This is the touchline on Y254 and on to our second part of the show, which is the interview. And we are glad to have for, for our members from the eSports, that's electronic sports officials and also players and the coach, of course, leading this is none other than the president, Ronnie Lusigi, who I've met severally on uh, such platforms, interview platforms. So thank you so much, Ronnie. And Ronnie is accompanied by Collins Ngugi, uh, player, and also coach Solomon Kahiga. Karibuni sana on Y254, the touchline. Uh, Ronnie, great to have you. Uh, that, I mean, it's also common knowledge that uh, for all those who follow the sport, know how the government has embraced and is talking about esports. And this shows the steps that the Federation has done in uh, popularizing the game. Yeah, thank you very much, Bernard. We are happy to be here at Y254. And uh, I'm happy to also come back now as a world record holder. Mm -hmm. uh, before last year when I was here, I was not yet president. Mm -hmm. Now I'm president yeah. and I'm the youngest president. That's the record? Of a sports federation in the whole world. <laughs> and the That's nine right. planets uh -huh. combined. Uh -huh. So uh, yes, we are really on an awareness drive uh -huh. since we took office in September. Uh -huh just trying to make sure that esports reaches uh -huh. people outside uh -huh. um, the esports space. Okay. We want to expand the space, uh -huh. we want to expand the audience, uh -huh. we want to expand the knowledge of people uh -huh. so that people in corporate, uh -huh. the ones who decide where the marketing dollars are sent, uh -huh. are able to know what esports is. People in the media like yourselves are uh -huh. able to know what esports is. Uh -huh. People in schools, parents, kids are able to know what esports is. And we are happy whenever we have the support of the media like Y254 mm -hmm. to give us this platform to talk to people, to make them aware, to make them know how good this sport is. Mm -hmm. So we're happy to be here, Bernard. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, Collins, how easy was it for you to pick between adventure, role playing and simulation? I mean, how, how easy was it for you to pick on, on the type of sport that you, you take part in? Um, thank you. Uh, it was easy because I started gaming when I was in class 3. I, I love gaming, I love video games, and it was easy because uh, I was sang in a team, Santiago, you have gamers, mm -hmm. and yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now being crowned um, under 15 champion, how, what, what kind of um, uh, uh, um, confidence did it give you in a, in a final in a village when, when you're playing and then you're, you're, you're winning and even becoming a champion. Naskia mm Zuri, -hmm. um, it's like a dream to uh -huh. me to win uh -huh. and compete against adults. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Na, 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 labda, um, uh, wale, wale wenzako ulioanza now when you win, wana semaji? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Coach, uta, 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 uh, uta yes, uh, yes. coach, coach um, Solomon has also, is also trained uh, the uh, sports coordinator, e-sports coordinator at uh, MKU, right? Yes, yes. Yes, indeed. Karibu, coach. Uh -huh. uh, Sante sana mm -hmm. uh, for having us, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm glad mm -hmm. to be here. Uh, like uh, President Ronnie has said, uh, we are in a drive to to talk to people about mm -hmm. what esports is all about. Mm -hmm. Because we've seen that uh, even govern government agencies don't know. Like uh, last year, mm -hmm. we were struggling uh, finding a passport for one of our players. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we were trying to, know, to, know, <laughs> to, to, get, to tell them what esports is all about, yes. they were like, what, what kind of sports is that? Mm -hmm. But now with the right focus from the media houses like Y254 mm -hmm. that is giving us, uh, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, also, as a coach, I've had uh, problems with parents mm -hmm. because you find uh, parents have that notion that esports is all about uh, time wastage. Mm -hmm. Now, as past they say, Mahali, mm -hmm. uh, there's one parent uh, when I, 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 I first uh, reached out to, to her, mm -hmm. she was like, Iyo Mahali, watu wanakunyo, wanavuta bangi, ndi unataka mtatuangu wakue. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we're trying to clear the notion that uh, mm -hmm. esports is uh, streamlining, mm -hmm. it's a proper sport, mm -hmm. and uh, that uh, parents now can entrust coaches or uh, people mandated to teams to uh, with their kids. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the parent to Kolo, I had to sit her down mm -hmm. and uh, explain to her. Mm -hmm. I've seen Kolo since he was young. Mm -hmm. He's been uh, gaming at uh, he was gaming at my gaming gaming den, mm -hmm. and uh, the the talent and the discipline I saw in him, mm -hmm. I saw that uh, he's as in uh, he's prop he's he's propped for 
greater things in future. Mm -hmm. So the parent now after a conversation and deliberations, mm -hmm. now she handed Kolo over to me mm -hmm. in that uh, when Kolo is not in school mm -hmm. and is not at home, mm -hmm. the parent knows that uh, mm -hmm. Kolo is with me. Mm -hmm. uh, you asked him, uh, sorry, you asked him about uh, how easy it was him for him to choose mm -hmm. between which type of game he'll be, pl he'll be playing. Yes. Uh, at the gaming den, he used to be good at uh, fighting games, mm -hmm. but uh, owing to the fact that he was good also at field mm -hmm. at field game mm -hmm. which was football mm -hmm. and uh, is and now fifa the now mm -hmm. which has uh, transformed to fc24 mm -hmm. i think uh, it was uh, easier mm -hmm. for us now to decide because you you combine the knowledge from the field mm -hmm. and now the little interest you have in uh, football gaming mm -hmm. to deciding on what game mm -hmm. you pursue mm -hmm. yes yes na kolo labda katika wekuwa champion hiyo fc24 ni nini unafikiria ambacho huo unafanya kila siku kinakufanya unakuwa unakuwa poa unakuwa bora um, training uh -huh. and finding something different from the other games uh -huh. na una find out aje unafanya research aje wewe research yako ina involve nini um, looking at the professional gamers like uh -huh. Anders uh -huh. and PhD uh -huh. they are pro gamers in they are like uh -huh. I learn from them uh -huh. watching them play uh -huh. in the tournaments. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Ronnie, um, I mean uh, Birmingham might have been two years ago, but it was big. You know, you really had the federation had a chance to stake their name. You know, and really push and introduce uh, the game to, to to everybody in the country. Uh, this year, how big is it for 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 the players from this particular? country uh, putting in mind that uh, last year it was also a good year where uh, you know the likes of demon did so well and they did even uh, perform so well at the e-league yeah yeah thank you as you say over the past two years mm -hmm. uh, starting with commonwealth in 2022 mm -hmm. kenyan esports players have been going to the international stage mm -hmm. and it is really our intention as the federation mm -hmm. to find as many opportunities as possible mm -hmm. to take people like collins mm -hmm. and other players to play at the international stage. Mm -hmm. What we are really focusing in our first two years, mm -hmm. the next two years that are coming, mm -hmm. are not even to go for the titles. Mm -hmm. If we get the titles, it is well and good. But first of all, we want to instill that experience, mm -hmm. to instill that belief that our people can compete internationally. Mm -hmm. So we send as many of, as, uh, as many of them as possible mm -hmm. to these international competitions. We tell them, have fun, enjoy yourselves, get the experience. Mm -hmm. But be that as is may, already our players are ahead of our schedule. Mm -hmm. While you are still speaking of participation, mm -hmm. them they are already elevating into achievement. Mm -hmm. Solomon has a young girl he's, who he, she, he is coaching. Mm -hmm. Her name is Shali Ndirangu. Mm -hmm. Last year she went to Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. Afro-Arab Esports Championship. Mm -hmm. The whole of the Middle East and African mm -hmm. countries combined. Mm -hmm. And she finished second place mm -hmm. um, in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. We saw also Demon, as you said, Eric Demon, mm -hmm. went to Nigeria, finished second place. Mm -hmm. We went to France, he won the Maison de Monde Cup. Mm -hmm. So I think players are also showing us that they are ahead of schedule. Mm -hmm. They are eager to go out there and that the skill gap is not that big. There are games that we can feel like simulation football, that the skill gap is, is not that big. But there are also other games that we feel like, especially for the mobile games and games played on computer, we feel like we need to provide more platforms. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we're speaking now, uh, some of them are competing uh, online in PUBG Mobile mm -hmm. and Call of Duty Mobile games mm -hmm. because they have an opportunity to play mm -hmm. in the Nigerian competition mm -hmm. in May where they'll face 17 other countries. So for us, it is very important right now mm -hmm. to get our people out there, to make people know that Kenyan players exist, and uh, to also demonstrate to, as you said, government, the corporate, the parents, that we have these opportunities at the international stage. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, indeed, and uh, when they are winning, and the now the federation is, fo is forced to catch up yes. to the players, you know, when you're planning, but they are winning, they're mm -hmm. one step ahead. So it means that the federation has to play catch up. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's, a good, it's always good when you're challenged. Mm -hmm. It's always good when people show you they are ready, when you thought you, you yourself, you thought they are not ready. Mm -hmm. But it also shows you because Kenya is a digitally native country. Mm -hmm. It's a country where anything that is digital, you'll mm -hmm. find people mm -hmm. who are there. You know, right now they're saying everywhere is about kufinya computer na kupata madola. Yeah. So in eSports, these people are also pressing those buttons and uh -huh. they are getting dollars, uh -huh. they are getting good money, but uh -huh. also beyond the money, uh -huh. they are getting a lot of experience. Uh -huh. We are seeing leaders develop. Uh -huh. uh, there is a young man called uh, Alan uh -huh. who's gone with the 
uh, women's esports team mm -hmm. to two world championships now mm -hmm. and is barely 22 years. Mm -hmm. The way he's been able to develop as a leader, mm -hmm. those are skills, even if you employ him here at Y254, mm -hmm. he can show those skills, he mm -hmm. can organize your team here, he mm -hmm. can tell this one, ensure you come early, tell this one, ensure you are disciplined. So mm -hmm. the social impact that esports is giving people, the self-esteem it is giving people, mm -hmm. some of them come here, that's when you start to see their parents saying, this person was not talkative, mm -hmm. but these days he or she is talkative. But it's because they were not finding people who love what they love. Mm -hmm. But now they found people who love what they love, mm -hmm. they feel like they're in a space that they are being respected. You know, you're in class and when people are saying, I'm good at this, I'm good at this, you are normally quiet. Mm -hmm. But now when somebody says, I went to sing choir mm -hmm. in America, mm -hmm. you tell him, I'm also coming from London mm -hmm. or Paris mm -hmm. to play e-sport. Mm -hmm. So, Munapelekano, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, Coach Labda, um, in, in your, in your uh, setting up the e-hub, right? Mm -hmm. The club that you set up, that's like five or six years ago. Uh, one of the achievements could be uh, Collins here, you know, who's gone on to become under 15 champion and also be ranked among the top eight, you know, and the gamers vault. But what are some of the other milestones that you may uh, talk about from the e-hub? Okay, uh, the milestones are, uh, like Ronnie has mentioned, mm -hmm. we have, uh, we also, in, in here, EHUB, mm -hmm. we have a uh, ladies category, mm -hmm. whereby I have uh, five ladies mm -hmm. uh, among the team members. And uh, one of the achievement is that uh, Shali got to represent Kenya mm -hmm. and Africa in the Afro-Arab League. Mm -hmm. And then we also have uh, a young man also by the name Kappa Harithuku. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, now Kappa was signed to a different, he is now signed to a different team. Mm -hmm. But uh, I take it to, I take it as, uh, as with pride that mm -hmm. uh, I discovered him when he was young as a Kolo. Mm -hmm. And uh, now that he is able to compete even uh, at the international level mm -hmm. is a great milestone for EHAB too. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, we have uh, like uh, leaders like uh, our captain, Michael Ngoi, mm -hmm. who was able to represent Mount Kenya University in uh, inter, in a inter university tournament, mm -hmm. whereby he represented Mount Kenya University versus uh, Mount Kigali University. Mm -hmm. He matched the champion. We also have uh, Sharon Oithera, mm -hmm. who was also representing Mount Kenya University in that inter university mm -hmm. sports tournament, mm -hmm. and uh, she was uh, top. We also have uh, Banis Wangari, uh, who was uh, the top in our inaugural Kenya University Esports League. It's mm -hmm. an initiative that we are pushing, mm -hmm. that now to have, apart from uh, tournaments for Mtaani, mm -hmm. we now have tournaments for institutions, mm -hmm. whereby institutions are embracing, uh, MKU being the pioneer to embrace esports. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also have other institutions now forming esports team, mm -hmm. funding the venture, mm -hmm. and. Uh, trying to push their players to participate in the, in mm -hmm. the sport, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, and Collins, already you've, you've won, you've you, you already won this year, uh -huh. right? Yeah. I mean, iyo, iyo inamanisha nini, unona mwake kikuwaje? It's a great success for me, mm -hmm. achievement, mm -hmm. and I hope for more to come mm -hmm. during the year, and even for the future. Mm -hmm. what, what are the uh, competitions, ama zile ma games zingine ambazo you looking forward this year? Mm. The Iliguan mm -hmm, tournament mm -hmm. next month, next month, mm -hmm. and the and it's another. There's another tournament whereby mm -hmm. there's the children and the adults playing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I hope to be there. Uh -huh. uh, um, itakuaje ya maana wao kishiriki. Usha kishiriki before. I know this is the third time it's coming back, right, Roni? Yeah. Yeah, we shall go to competitions at League One before. Is it tattoos in No, no, no. It's my first time. So how how important will it be will it be for you? When I go there, I'm taking it as a great opportunity mm -hmm. to participate in the League One, mm -hmm. and I hope to emerge victorious. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, indeed, and he'll be the youngest to ever go. Right, uh, Ronnie? When yeah, you if, say if he makes yeah. it, yeah. he'll be the youngest to, to do it in his category mm -hmm. uh, because uh, he's now at the right age. Mm -hmm. uh, Liguan goes 16 and above. Mm -hmm. So the reason he's not been able to participate before, as mm -hmm. coach can confirm, yeah. he was younger than the, the threshold. Mm -hmm. But now he's there. We are seeing there's a, his age meet in, in Europe called Anders, who is also doing, doing wonders. And this also shows what we really want to do together with coaches like Solomon uh -huh. and, and other people is we want to start 
from a younger age. Mm -hmm. We want to start tapping this talent early. Mm -hmm. So it's also a challenge for us as a federation mm -hmm. that people like Collins, players like Collins, should not have to wait until they're 16 mm -hmm. to get these big opportunities. Mm -hmm. We should go for them mm -hmm. where they are in mm -hmm. their teenage, mm -hmm. have those teenage categories. Mm -hmm. and yes, and yeah. so this means that uh, the establishment of hubs will be so key, or how are you planning to approach this? Yeah, first is, is the school system. Mm -hmm. um, Already, mm -hmm. we have a few secondary schools mm -hmm. we are speaking to. Mm -hmm. uh, watch this space. Uh, a very big girls' school mm -hmm. in Kenya. Mm -hmm. In Nairobi? Chances are yes. Uh -huh. In Nairobi <laughs> Metropolitan. Let me say <laughs> the Metropolitan. Okay. It may be Nairobi <laughs> or Nairobi Metropolitan. Uh -huh. A very big girls' school. Uh -huh. uh, they wear a green uniform. Mm -hmm. Let me give you that hint. I, uh, I can uh, guess. They'll uh -huh. be soon. You'll uh -huh. be hearing things there. Pimpy? We have eagerness from the parents, uh -huh. uh, from the teachers. Uh -huh. uh, there's also a very big boys' school. Uh -huh. They also have a green sweater. I don't uh -huh. know what is this. Uh -huh. The green sweater. Uh -huh. Because be like an Ingwe fan, I don't like green colors. Uh -huh. uh, but I also, like your calmation because you're winning yeah? <laughs> <laughs> but th those two schools are very important uh -huh. uh, we also have a school like saint christopher's mm -hmm. we did an activation there mm -hmm. in the high school last year mm -hmm. so we are going to the to the school system mm -hmm. but also we are upping our game so that we can be able to move quicker and mm -hmm. train people mm -hmm. so that you can have many more Solomons. Mm -hmm. Apart from training many more Solomons, mm -hmm. we also want to certify them mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. parents can also feel safe. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. same way in soccer, a parent feels yes. safe that they know Bernard is a trained coach, yeah. Bernard is certified, mm -hmm. and they can hold Bernard to account. Yes. And if they, they can't find Bernard, they mm -hmm. know the Federation mm -hmm. knows who Bernard is. Mm -hmm. So we also want to go to that level that we will be able to certify coaches mm -hmm. so that if you walk into a school and you say you want to teach eSports, mm -hmm. you have already uh, gone above the integrity threshold, the mm -hmm. Federation has looked at you, mm -hmm. and also you can transfer those skills. Mm -hmm. So we'll need a lot. I'm saying there are going to be a lot of job opportunities mm -hmm. because if all these schools are coming up and they want to have a resident uh, coach, mm -hmm. it means there'll be job opportunities that we'll be creating, mm -hmm. which goes in sync with what uh, our cabinet secretary for sports normally says, monetizing talents. Mm -hmm. You just mm -hmm. don't monetize the playing talent. Mm -hmm. There's the support staff talent. Mm -hmm. So we want to have as many coaches as possible. Mm -hmm. We also want to upscale the knowledge of teachers mm -hmm. so that where we can't send a coach, a teacher at least has the basic knowledge. Mm -hmm. A teacher knows if this kid is playing, maybe uh, the distance between the kid and the screen, Maybe the kid should be hydrating mm -hmm. and things like those. The teacher and the parent are also able to understand the age rating of certain games. Because mm -hmm. certain games are rated 13, mm -hmm. others are rated 18, others are rated E for everyone. Mm -hmm. So this is a knowledge that we really want to impart. Mm -hmm. And we will also be combining with audiovisual mm -hmm. means. Uh, social mm -hmm. media and our mm -hmm. website, mm -hmm. we are working on revamping them so that you can find these resources. Mm -hmm. You don't have to physically find Ronnie mm -hmm. for you to get these resources or mm -hmm. to physically find Collins or Solomon. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. can easily go online mm -hmm. and we, we are receiving a lot of support from the British Esports mm -hmm. um, Association mm -hmm. to, to mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. Also receiving support from the French Embassy in Kenya mm -hmm. so that we are taking the expertise of these people in countries that are ahead of us in esports. Mm -hmm. Because we believe Kenya can be an esports giant. Mm -hmm. Already, the other continents, the esports giants have formed. Mm -hmm. You know, in Asia, it is China. Mm -hmm. uh, Xi Jinping, even the president, is big on esports. Mm -hmm. You know, in the Middle East, it is Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. supported by His Royal Highness Bin Salman. Mm -hmm. You know, in, Fran in, in Europe, Macron, President mm -hmm. Macron, His Excellency, is leading that. You know, in, in, in North America, it's US, mm -hmm. and in South America, it's Brazil. Mm -hmm. But in Africa, people are still looking for the compass, mm -hmm. and we want, because this is the home of mankind, mm -hmm. and this is also the Silicon Savannah, mm -hmm. this should be the place that people in the next few years can say, mm -hmm. go and look at Kenya, at eSport. Mm -hmm. And we believe, uh, uh, we retaliate that we want to do this in a regulated manner. Mm -hmm. We know uh, because the freedom that eSport has had as a digital mm -hmm. uh, sport, this may be uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but we are encouraged mm -hmm. by uh, people in our community that we need to have checks and balances. Mm -hmm. If you're going to run a tournament, mm -hmm. you're going to have 200 people. Mm -hmm. You should show us. Mm -hmm. you, do you have first aid? Mm -hmm. You should show us. Do you have security? Mm -hmm. You should demonstrate. If you said your prize money is a million, you should demonstrate. Mm -hmm. Where is the bank statement showing you have this uh, million shillings? Mm -hmm. Because you also have had the case of rogue agents and rogue tournament organizers that if we don't curb right now, we may go maybe even to the unfortunate scene you see in other sports like mm -hmm. doping. Mm -hmm. So as a federation, we're also going to really work with the esports community mm -hmm. to ensure that 
we are able mm -hmm. to have rules and regulations mm -hmm. that can ensure esports is practiced safely mm -hmm. so that we grow in a regulated and safe guarded mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Yes, and Coach Labda, when um, Ronnie was speaking about building the capacity of coaches, what was going on in my mind was how badly are people like you needed? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, about uh, training, like mm -hmm. myself, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm self-taught mm -hmm. because uh, I used to be a player. Uh, we played much on uh, FIFA during the COVID time because everybody was indoors. Mm -hmm. And uh, much of my experience or whatever I, trans I translate to these young people mm -hmm. is what I learned during that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, also as we progress, uh, we keep on now learning. There are online tutorials mm -hmm. on uh, some things that you need to, mm -hmm. to capture in from a player when they are playing or mm -hmm. when they are practicing. Mm -hmm. But uh, now with the help of the Federation, we'll now have that uh, certification. Like uh, he's saying, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, like for instance, in uh, when I was pushing for is for esports at Mount Kenya University, mm -hmm. uh, it was hard for them for first to understand. Mm -hmm. Up to a point where, by like my boss now knows me as when he sees me, he calls me esports <laughs> because I kept on hammering, hammering on the point on yeah. esports. Yeah. But you see now with the certification, I can prove to them uh, these are my papers. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is what I have done, uh, this is what I can do, and mm -hmm. uh, this is what we plan to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also visited, uh, at Santiago, mm -hmm. we've uh, visited uh, Mangu High School mm -hmm. uh, during uh, their last year sports uh, tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we got an opportunity to showcase to them mm -hmm. what esports is all about. Like mm -hmm. we say, we are pushing by uh, from all angles to ensure that everybody is on board. Mm -hmm. We don't wait for a time when uh, someone is about 20 plus years to get into esports, but uh, at younger, at tender age, mm -hmm. where they, they can now start learning the basics. Mm -hmm. By the time they're getting to 20, because I believe 20 is the, almost the prime age, mm -hmm. they'll be ready for any challenge. Yes, indeed. And uh, to Collins, where do you go to school? Uh, Broadway High School. Mm -hmm. And uh, they support you? Have other colleagues that play, classmates or schoolmates who play with you? No. Why? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. uh, yeah. uh, yeah. uh, yeah. uh, 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 Kenya won in the uh -huh. becoming the first game in Kenya uh -huh. and participating internationally and winning the international titles. Uh -huh. Yes, indeed. Uh, that's uh, Collins Googie, a teen sensation in esports. Uh, Ronnie, before we wind up, you know, uh, the forthcoming events, of course, uh, League One, uh, League One, the Kenyan uh, auditions, just uh, the selection process happening next weekend. Uh, what, there'll be numbers, huge numbers coming up. How ready are you to take on the numbers as we yeah. finish up? Yeah, yeah sure, Ben, and thank you very much. And just to touch on what Solomon said, uh -huh. we really congratulate Mount Kenya University for mm -hmm. becoming the first university in East and Central Africa mm -hmm. of adopting esports as a co-curricular uh, uh, sport mm -hmm. like any other, mm -hmm. and even sponsoring to a huge part the first ever Kenya University Esports League. Mm -hmm. I know he has got already many state commendations, but we should find something else to award uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Gisharu, mm -hmm. the chairman of MKU, because mm -hmm. he's taken a very visionary step. Uh, back to the e league one tour, mm -hmm. as we said, we are taking esports to every corner of the country. So this time we have challenged ourselves that e league one has been happening in Nairobi alone, and this is an opportunity to go to France to fight for a competition of uh, 1.2 million mm -hmm. shillings. Mm -hmm. So we said, why not make it bigger? Mm -hmm. So we are, yes, we are going to Mombasa and Nakuru, mm -hmm. and Mombasa being County 001 will mm -hmm. be the first one. Mm -hmm. So next weekend on March 2nd, we'll be there, we'll be there in Mombasa, Mbaraki Sports Club, mm -hmm. famous for soccer and other things. Yeah. We are taking esports there, and we are looking forward to see diversity. We are looking forward to see diversity in gender, diversity in people in locations, diversity in age, the young ones and the veterans, just to show this up. And also in May, we shall be taking uh, Kenyan esports players to Nigeria mm -hmm. for the Gamer X uh, competition. Um, also in April, we are speaking, still finalizing a deal to take people to Egypt. Uh, coming uh, down in the year, we have the Global Esports Championships set for China this year. 
we want to go big there. We've already gone twice, mm -hmm. uh, done the group stage. So we believe this time we should be speaking about knockout stages in the games. And we're also speaking with the Global Esports Federation to bring an esports competition of continental nature mm -hmm. here in the country. It's a discussion we're having together with the Ministry of Sports. And I'm hoping towards half of the year, uh, thereabout, we shall be having um, good news to the African esports community because they are yearning for an African continental competition mm -hmm. officially done by a global federation. So we are speaking to, to that. We've seen a, a lot of goodwill and support from uh, our leadership, uh, President Christian from Singapore and our CEO, uh, Mr. Paul J. Foster. So we believe that we shall be able to push that. But we're also receiving a lot of goodwill and support from the government. I know we've even had the prime cabinet secretary, mm -hmm. Saliam Davadi, mm -hmm. saying esports should be taken seriously. You've seen Waziri Ababu Namwamba attending our events, playing with us there. We've seen even when you are there, when you're doing the forum for the federations, yes. esports being prominently mentioned again and again mm -hmm. by the sports registrar, by the people in the sports fund, that this is an emerging sport we should look to. Mm -hmm. So we hope for that. And also we are closing in to football because it's the most popular sport in the country to get, try and get a few football teams to also have their um, Esports versions of teams, mm -hmm. giants of course like AFC uh, Leopards, uh, <laughs> Gomahia, uh, Gormahia, <laughs> uh, Shabana, uh, uh, also emerging teams like Kariobangi Sharks, who are Bandari teams that are very keen on digital. You mm -hmm. know, Task FC. Yes. We and they can afford one player per per team so that we can have an EFKF Cup because yes. now FIFA has the FIFA Women's, FIFA Men's, FIFA yeah. Youth, and the E FIFA Cup. Uh -huh. So we already have FKF Women. Yes. We already have FKFPL. Mm -hmm. We believe there's an opportunity to have an mm -hmm. EFKF mm -hmm. and to also to go to basketball and mm -hmm. to have an EKBF. Mm -hmm. Those two uh, titles, those two sports are very popular in terms of the esports and simulation. Mm -hmm. And of course, the safari rally. You see those racing rigs everywhere. Mm -hmm. So we want to speak to the traditional sports federations, let them know that mm -hmm. we are enablers of their mm -hmm. sport. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. yes, indeed. That's uh, Ronnie Lusigi, the president for Esports Federation of Kenya, of course, talking with us on uh, the pre uh, plans for the esports and what's coming up next. Of course, what's coming up next is next weekend, there'll be uh, the qualifiers or selection for the League One players and only uh, very limited slots available, but you're encouraged to come out and participate in the selection. Thank you so much, Colin. It's the team sensation and all the best. May you become the League One champion, right? And as well as uh, Coach Solomon, thank you. And so my uh, continue nurturing more and inspiring the rest of uh, the uh, world beaters who will come and take over the sport and become teachers of teachers just like you. Thank you so much uh, for gracing uh, Touchland this lovely afternoon. Yeah, we take a short break. We'll be back with the fan zone. <laughs>